Hey there, team, and welcome to this brief update on the Myanmar earthquake that occurred on March 28th of this year. I covered this earthquake. I'll put a link in the video description to that video I put together where I dive into the tectonic setting, the fault uh, mechanics, and all the data and information that you might want there. The reason I'm doing this video now is a viewer, uh, Keith Farley, and thank you, Keith, for sending that to me, sent me a video footage um, that is outstanding and um, spectacular. I've never actually seen anything quite like it. You were actually going to see the movement of the fault take place on a video feed. You're actually going to get to see the ground break uh, and the earth move during this large earthquake. So just to set the table a little bit here, this was one of the biggest earthquakes in the last five years or so. I think it's only second to the 2023 Mar uh, magnitude 7.8 earthquake in Turkey. So it's a very large earthquake, very likely that we end 2025. And this is the biggest earthquake of the year globally. Possibly there could be a bigger one, but that that very well could be the case. Uh, I'm not going to walk you through all the normal stuff I do with this earthquake because I've done that already. And that video, again, is for you in the video description. I do, before I get to this uh, really compelling video footage I have for you, I do want to share with you, and I'll put this link down as well. This is a really great uh, summary of that event. So if you want to know more about it, and if you want to kind of deep dive into this earthquake, the USGS has put together uh, a great presentation. This is a, what's called a story map. They use GIS and lots of data to put together essentially a really nice kind of slideshow PowerPoint type thing, although it's not on PowerPoint, but something quite similar to that with all sorts of information. Um, and so I just want to skim through this a little bit here. They've got some information on the background. Um, and again, you can look at all this and spend more time with this if you'd like to um, on your own talking about the, the tectonic setting and why we had this fault and earthquake in this area. Um, I do. Uh, there's a couple really nice things on here uh, that I do want to spend some time with. There's sort of historic seismicity in the region. You can see the star where this earthquake occurred on March 28th. All the circles are other historic events. Bigger the circle, the larger the uh, earthquake. And, but they do have some a couple of things here that I think are pertinent to what I want to show you here in a second. Uh, one is that the modeling from this earthquake showed that there was a maximum slip or offset generated by this breakage of rock by this earthquake of about six meters, so about 18 to 20 feet or so, um, right near the main shock epicenter. Uh, further away, the movement was anywhere from two to three meters. And the video I'm going to show you, uh, based on the amount of slip we're seeing there, is probably a little bit further away. In fact, I know the location. It's a good um, 100 or so kilometers, 70 miles or so south of Mandalay, which was near the epicentral area here. Uh, so one nice thing that they have on here is this little map over here, and we can actually make this bigger. So this actually runs you through the last 125 years of seismicity in the area. So there's a map of the area, the Saigang Fault, which is the main fault system here. This is not on the plate boundary per se, but it's accommodating a lot of the tectonic motion between these two uh, plates here. And again, I covered all this in a earlier video, but this plate, or excuse me, this fault is, um, again, accommodating a lot of the motion. So you can see here running, you can see the dates here in the top left corner. Here's the earthquakes coming in. So they've got them plotted by magnitude. Um, and this takes about a minute to run through this whole animation, but it's really well done. Um, colors will change a little bit once they get like a big significant quake. So you can see yellow for the 7.6 and then these sort of regional aftershocks related to that big 8.0 down here, probably subduction zone quake along this part of the boundary. So this is just covering seismicity in the area. The main feature, of course, that we're focused on is this uh, fault system here, which produced this March 28th earthquake. Um, but you can see just the seismicity in the area over the past uh, century plus. Again, just letting you know how active this region is in terms of earthquake frequency and also earthquake magnitudes. You know, we do get these seven and above quakes pretty often. You can kind of see them popping up here, you know, maybe once every uh, 15, 20 years or so, depending on what the averages are. And then we'll get that big one there, uh, big orange one there, right at the end when we had this one. So I like that a lot. I just wanted to share that with you. Um, kind of going down through their story map a little bit further. This is a 
animation of after aftershocks. So from this big quake we had in, again, March 28th of 2025, this is going to show the big main event there in blue, a quick aftershock nearby. And this will just run you through all the aftershocks. This is a very short video uh, over like, I guess, about 11 day period following the earthquake. So again, great work from the USGS. There's some really fun stuff here. Uh, these story maps are really nicely done, giving you both visuals and text uh, so you can really kind of digest and understand this information. Um, intensity levels were really high. You can see the elongated um, regions here, different than what we typically see. We typically see more of a bullseye pattern, but because this was a strike slip fault, the fault was moving the rocks laterally, horizontally, um, that distributed a lot of the strongest shaking in that north-south direction parallel to the fault. And so you can see that reflected here in the intensity values associated with that earthquake. Um, then they kind of zoom in, talk about ground deformation. Uh, again, lots of good stuff here. I just don't want to take too much time here because I want to get you to the main event of this video. And I, I did promise myself I would keep it brief. All the authors to the study, great work, USGS. And I'll make sure this link is up there for you. Okay, so without further ado, let me show you this. This is pretty incredible. Um, so what we have here, and this was, I'll share this uh, Facebook link as well. This was the, the original source as far as I can tell. Um, but basically a security cabin on some sort of, uh, or security camera, excuse me, on someone's cabin or house. Um, and what we want to watch here is you'll see when I play the video, which is about 27 seconds long, uh, you'll see the initial movement of the ground, the shaking caused by the earthquake. But what I want you to watch is right after you see the gate kind of open uh, because of the movement, the fault system runs right outside the property, uh, pretty much parallel to this street, just right outside the fence here. And that's where you're actually going to see the ground break. And because this was a right lateral fault, you'll see that side of the fault um, on the other side of away from the house out there on uh, the middle ground that will be shoved to the right relative to this side here. So it's, it's really an incredible video. Um, and that was the whole reason for me putting together this video here. So here we go. Let's see the earthquake begins right here. The earthquakes begun. Watch right outside the gate there. <laughs> and then you see it all just move uh, in a split second. It's really incredible. I've watched it about 30 times now, but let's, I can't get enough of it. So there's the, the initial movement, the strong waves. Then you can see, you know, maybe about two meters or so, about six feet of movement just outside um, the property here, right along the street. A couple other ways to look at it while I kind of run you through this several times. Um, you can watch the cement on in the driveway here, buckle and break as those earthquake waves come in and they get compressed due to the, or with the shear stress from the fault. You can watch some of the dust come up here once the movement takes place and the ground break off in this direction. Um, some like object just kind of fell over over there. Again, there's so many places to look here. Um, looks like we have one of the water tanks from someone's house comes down and explodes as it hits the ground and then the ground breaks. Uh, just incredible. Another good place to kind of focus your attention is just outside the fence on this right side. You can really see there just the ground laterally move. So the movement was mainly on that side. You can also see the power lines going crazy over there. Again, we're watching this several times just because it's so incredible. And I think, you know, as far as I know, as far as I'm aware, this is maybe the first, if not the best, documentation of surface rupture of ground breaking and offsetting the fault or the fault uh, and the, the fault breaking and offsetting the ground i'm too excited to articulate well um that i've ever seen you can watch this little kind of uh, pagoda little kind of uh, pergola type thing here the little shrine whatever thing kind of get moved over um, the power lines there's just so much to digest in this so um wanted you to see this just to i mean this is going to be a, a just a classic video clip that i will include in uh, my courses to show them how surface rupture works and this again just classic movement of a right lateral strike slip fault uh, and you can see everything just moved there within about a second or so once those uh the ground motion kind of hits things get compressed just so much going on here so yeah, one more time. <laughs> the water tank. I mean, there's just so much to digest here going on. 
Uh, pretty spectacular stuff. So that was the whole point of the video. Just a quick follow-up from this um, earthquake uh, in Burma. And just wanted to show you this image and this video here because it's just spectacular. And, and I think for learning geology and learning, you know, we always get to see, we sometimes feel earthquakes. We sometimes, we always see aftermath and images of what the earthquake did. But it's very rare that people are present right where the where the surface rupture where the fault is breaking the surface uh people are there to witness it or in this case have a video device there to record exactly uh how that movement took place so just perfect uh image here from that security camera looking in exactly the right direction and just lots of good science going on there of course i don't want to um uh, you know, I, I want to make sure I also recognize this was a very devastating earthquake and they're still feeling the effects of it. There were something like over 5,400 deaths from this quake and lots of injuries. So I don't want to um, at all, you know, not give enough credence to the humanitarian aspect of this quake, but purely from a science perspective, a uh, pretty fascinating video. So just wanted to share that with you. Hope that was helpful and exciting. Thanks for all you do to support the channel and we'll see you next time, team. Take care.